By far, the most confusion people have when they're coming to visit Asheville, North Carolina is figuring out where they are and where they want to be. So today we're going to take you through everything that you need to know so that you have a better understanding of where you might want to live in Asheville. Okay, zooming in on the U.S., we are heading straight down to Western North Carolina. And would you look at that? Probably easier if there's less things around there. So there we have there we have Asheville. So we're bordering Tennessee. We're bordering South Carolina. We're also really close to Georgia too. Asheville is about an hour fifteen minutes from Greenville, South Carolina, a town kind of similar size to Asheville, and about two hours from Charlotte. And Charlotte's a financial hub and a bigger city. You can see some Broadway shows there and experience the city life. And then again about. Uh, two hours from Knoxville, Tennessee. So you can see some football games and some big concerts in Knoxville. And then if you look down to the left, the lower left, you'll see Atlanta, Georgia. That's about three and a half hours. International airports in Atlanta, we fly out of there sometimes and also fly out of Charlotte. If you want to head to the beach from Asheville, head right down to Charleston, South Carolina. Straight shot down, that's four hours away. But if you want to go to the beach and still be in North Carolina, you kind of have a little bit of a haul. You're going to go all the way across Raleigh-Durham out to the Outer Banks. It's absolutely beautiful out there, but it takes a good 10, 11 hours to drive from Asheville out there. So let's zoom in a little bit more and head on into Asheville. If we start to look at how Asheville is structured, we have I-40 that goes all the way across Asheville from side to side. And that's really your shortcut to get from east to west Asheville, from like Candler to Swannanoa. You never have to get on what I call the rainbow, which is like 240, which goes up and over Asheville like this. That kind of takes you through downtown and the city up to Monford and kind of connects the north and the south of, of town. And then we have I-26, which, which goes all the way down to the coast, like we talked about in Charleston, and all the way up through places like Weaverville and Mars Hill. That's how you get to the north of Asheville. So if we're looking at it from a whole, it's a pretty easy system to get around when you're considering the interstates. A lot of people look at Asheville and they think, oh, wow, it's really not that far to get from one place to another. But here's the catch. Not all these roads are really like thick and straight and easy to drive on because we have the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains that surround us. So sometimes when you look on a map and you're like, oh, it's only 40 minutes to Chimney Rock. That 40 minutes is pretty labor intensive sometimes because you can have some windy roads. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're driving around Asheville. Hi, I'm Beth Shadler, and we are the Living in Asheville team, where we explore what it's like to move to Asheville, North Carolina. Please feel free to reach out in any of the ways down below. Give us a call. Send us a text. We absolutely love it. And hit the subscribe button. You're going to want to learn more about Asheville. And click that little bell so that you can be alerted every time we make new videos for you. So when we're thinking about Asheville, North Carolina, Asheville sits in Buncombe County. And Buncombe County has about 300,000 people, while Asheville city limits has about 100,000. So let's take a look at this on the screen and look at Buncombe County and what that encompasses. So you can see that Buncombe County kind of goes all the way out to Sandy Mush, up to Mars Hill, over right past Black Mountain, in and around Fairview, past Fletcher, and back up in between Canton and Candler. So it's quite a large area. So if you look at the Asheville city limits here, you'll see, hey, that's not very big at all. And it's kind of wonky. <laughs> There's no like, like just radius that it goes out from. It goes all over up to Woodfin about, over to Inca Village, almost to Bent Creek, parts of that down to Biltmore Park, or like, hey, let's include Biltmore Park down there. We always really liked that area. Up to Haw Creek, and then a little bit on the right up to Woodfin, and that's about it. That's a little, little area, which is good for you taxpayers that don't want to pay city tax. 
because if you're outside the city limits, then you only pay Buncombe County tax, so it's going to be a lot cheaper. Not that North Carolina has really expensive tax anyway, but just something to think about. So as we work our way back over to the map, I also want you to note the topography. So when you start looking at the mountains of North Carolina and of Asheville area, you can kind of see, I have a lot of people that you know want views, and you can kind of see where those views are when you're looking at the map here. And I encourage you all to do this, study this, because a lot of the properties that you're gonna see that you're gonna be interested in, may be difficult to get to, or they might have a steep driveway, or it may look absolutely fabulous from the listing that the realtor had put online. But then when you look on Google Maps and you see what's around it, maybe you're like, yeah, that's not my cup of tea. That is too good to be true. So always look at Google Maps and check out the topography too. And what's interesting about Asheville is that when we look here, we have mountains all the way around us, almost encompassing all of Asheville. Asheville kind of sits at a plateau in the middle um, with some hills around it, but not as extreme as the, the mountains that s surround the outskirts of Asheville. And if you look, there's only kind of one area that has more rolling pastures and more open views. And that's kind of more around the Leicester area. So look over here and see how the topography kind of changes there. And you see there's less vegetation and less trees on the mountain. So that, that means you just have like these open vistas and like it kind of reminds me of a fairy tale, like a happy valley type of area because you really get this wonderful picturesque landscape of mountain views that stack on top of each other. It's gorgeous, but Leicester in itself is still developing. So Leicester might not be your cup of tea, even though it's absolutely gorgeous. You can get views anywhere around Asheville. And if you're ever interested in learning more about the traffic in Asheville, or combating stories that you may have heard online, you can always go on the layer for traffic and it will show you what's happening in Asheville at the current time. So right now it's not too busy. It's Saturday afternoon, about three o'clock. People are not out doing a lot today and that we have green lights every single place. There's not congestion anywhere, which is not normal. Most of the time on weekdays, you'll see a little bit south of town down here on I-26, you'll see some red hot zones where people are backed up on the interstate because quite frankly, they've been doing construction on I-26 for the last 1,246 years. So there's a lot of backup that happens. Plus that's where our, um, our uh, airport is down there. So people are going in and out through the airport, especially around holiday season and busy, tr busy travel times. But a lot of people commute too from Mills River and Hendersonville and places in the south up to Asheville so it can get kind of jammed up. Okay, now that we've covered the outskirts of Asheville, let's head straight into town. As we zoom in, you're going to see the main points of Asheville city proper. So again, really, it's it's 40 that goes across and then 240 that goes up and over. And then here's kind of the downtown area. So you see this yellow part here? This is where all the action happens. This is downtown Asheville. This is where you're going to find the the Civic Center with big music happenings and all the tourist attractions and the little parks and the wonderful, wonderful restaurants that you've heard a lot about. And then down here, this is called the South Slope. And this is where all the breweries are located. Now, back in the day, this area didn't used to be much of anything. It was quite industrial, but some some smart people got together and they're like, let's put 12 million breweries down here. Now, I think how many breweries are down there? Like 20 something breweries all located in the South Slope. You can just hop from one to another to another. So you don't even have to get in your Uber. Uh, and then if you're just staying downtown, that's even better. I'm not sure how loud it gets in that area. I'm, I can imagine at night on the weekends, it could get a little loud, but 
Uh, I'm sure it's a lot of fun as well. And then you have like a big music venue there called Rabbit Rabbit. You also have the Orange Peel nearby. I'm sure you've heard of these if you're if you're into seeing shows in general. But there's a lot happening downtown, and that's kind of the hub of everything. That's where our baseball Asheville tourists you can see down here. That's where our our baseball field is. Um, and yeah, here's some more uh, here's some more breweries. Great Eagle Music Hall. So here we have the downtown. If you ever want to buy a condo downtown, it is probably a really fun experience to be able to live and be downtown without having to leave because everything kind of operates from that area. Unless you are a full-time local resident of Asheville and you're not so concerned about the hustle and the bustle of doing all the things. And say you have kids that go to school on the east side or the west side and you have to be different places. It's probably not so convenient to live downtown. Another thing, if you're downtown, you'll also want to check out Pack Square. And Pack Square is really interesting because that's where the Buncombe County Courthouse is and the city buildings. There's also a big open green space right in front of that. So throughout the year, there'll be different events like the Big Crafty or people will have performances right here on the stage. Oh, right here is a stage and then you can sit out here. There's some ecstatic dance throughout the year too. It's just a big place to congregate downtown that's kind of open and, and free to the public. And then here, yeah, here's the City Hall and the Buncombe County uh, District Court Right to the left, we have the police department and the fire department. And then we get into the heart of downtown. So if you want to get out of downtown and you want to go north, the easiest way is to take Broadway up to Merriman. And Merriman Avenue is the gateway to the north of Asheville. Okay, headed out from downtown, I wanna give you a, another little overview of where we are and what we're looking at in Asheville. Because this being kind of the, the main hub of Asheville, it's important to know what's around here. So this little part right there, that's the downtown that we were looking at. Here we have West Asheville, which I'm sure that you've heard of before. There's kind of two different parts to West Asheville. There's the uh, East West Asheville and the West West Asheville. The hip part is kind of all around uh, Haywood Road. So that's what you're really going to look at. And we'll get into that deeper when we get into the different quadrants of Asheville. But this is just the overview portion right now. So that's West Asheville. And this heads out to Inca Candler, the Twin Cities. And then you're, head, you're headed straight out of town at that point. So then to the south, we have Biltmore area down here, and then we have the Biltmores, like Biltmore Forest, Biltmore Park, areas like that towards the south, Biltmore Village, everything kind of rotates around the Biltmore Estate because that's where all the workers live too, so it's kind of an interesting area. On the other side, we have Oakley, which is a popular area of Asheville too, and then Haw Creek towards the east, and this is gonna head out towards Swannanoa, and then up to the north, we're going to have the University of North Carolina. And then we have Montford, which you may have seen the video that I made about Montford as well. And then we have the Grove Park, the Grove Park Inn up to the north. There's a lot of reasons to like the northern side of Asheville. And even all the way up 45 minutes up north of downtown Asheville is absolutely stunning. It's one of my favorite parts of uh, Asheville is right north of Asheville near the University of North Carolina, Asheville. And I'll kind of show you why, because there's a lot of unique charm there. So as we head out of downtown, we are going to go straight up on Merriman Avenue. And this goes all the way up to Woodfin and Weaverville, places like that. But here, right out of downtown, look how close that is to downtown. We have a Whole Foods market. And this is a twofer because next door we have a Trader Joe's, actually a threefer, and there's a Publix. There's a Publix, Harris Teeter. There's a Harris Teeter there. People love this area because you can walk to all of the different grocery stores. There's also coffee shops and little boutiques as well. There's a spa nearby. There's a vet. 
There's anything you want, restaurants, whatever, right along Merriman Avenue right there. And that's really close to Montford. This is where, when you think about the, the, the olden days of all the history that encompasses Asheville, that's kind of where it happened. And it's all before like I-26 and the French Broad River, all on this side of that, on the left side of Merriman. And University of North Carolina, Asheville, we have the botanical gardens right there. So within, I don't know, four minutes from downtown Asheville, you have walking trails. It's absolutely gorgeous. You can kind of get lost in the woods really close to Asheville. On the right side of Merriman, again, really right right close to downtown, you have the Charlotte Street area. Now, Charlotte Street has a long sorted history, but is a really nice area. It's also called the wellness area of Asheville, which I recently learned lately because there's a lot of yoga studios. The Ayurvedic Institute just moved to Asheville from New Mexico, and that's located in that area. And there's just a lot of spas and massage and Reiki, and that's where all the wellness practitioners kind of gather. Um, so yeah, this is Charlotte Street, which leads all the way up to the Grove Park Inn area. Now, you've probably heard of the Grove Park Inn if you know about Asheville, but that's a great place to catch a sunset and take people who are visiting from out of town. So if you are one of those people, then hit it up. It's really close to the Grove Park Country Club, so we have a golf course right there that's stunning. Also, beautiful, huge homes near the Grove Park area. Some that have been featured in movies. It's along Kimberly Avenue. Just drive along there. It's stunning. As you make your way north, you'll find iconic restaurants like the Asheville Pizza and Brewing, which is one of our favorite places that where you could go and have some, some craft beer and wonderful pizza and watch movies. I've been going there for years. And then you'll get to Beaver Lake. Beaver Lake is a gem when we think about Asheville. Hi, I'm Beth Shadler, and we are the Living in Asheville team, where we explore what it's like to move to Asheville, North Carolina. Please feel free to reach out in any of the ways down below. Give us a call. Send us a text. We absolutely love it. And hit the subscribe button. You're going to want to learn more about Asheville. And click that little bell so that you can be alerted every time we make new videos for you. And also, we have the Country Club of Asheville up north as well. If you go out to the right here, you can kind of get lost in back in the Beaver area, Beaver Road area, back in the woods, and it becomes remote quite quickly. You could be kind of, you could be pretty close to downtown Asheville, but feel like you're in the middle of the wilderness when you get out that way. So that's sort of the tip of the northern part of downtown Asheville, which we are going to call North Asheville because we are not headed up to Woodfin yet. That will be a different video. Okay, so now we're going to head over to the east side. I'm going to give you a little bit more perspective. Here's Asheville in general, and we are going to go over to the eastern side of Asheville in this area. So we were just checking out west, uh, north and the Grove Park Inn, and then here's a mountain ridge and a road called Town Mountain, which pretty much separates the north side of Asheville and the east side of Asheville. Now, along this ridge, there's a lot of very beautiful homes and lots, and they overlook downtown, and they overlook the mountains of Western North Carolina. It's an absolutely gorgeous place, but there is a mountain ridge. So once you go over that mountain ridge, you are going to head into East Asheville. Now you can get there from downtown on Tunnel Road. So once you go through that tunnel, you'll know, okay, boom, it's a portal. It's also a portal to nature. So East Asheville is kind of known for its nature and its less chaotic lifestyle. Um, it's easy to get a little bit more land there. It's just not as uh, hustly and bustly as the rest of Asheville can be at times. It's quite, it's quite blissful. I really like it. And Haw Creek is a really large neighborhood that you can see highlighted there. And it kind of puts it in perspective to how big Haw Creek is. Haw Creek has a couple of elementary schools. 
lots of little subdivisions and neighborhoods inside the area of Haw Creek. The Blue Ridge Parkway, you can see, borders one side of Haw Creek, and there's trails. In some houses here, you can walk right out your back door and walk on trails all the way up to the Blue Ridge Parkway, and you can just keep walking. It's absolutely stunning. So if we look a little bit more into taking Tunnel Road out of downtown Asheville, you're gonna pass quite a few neighborhoods that you may have heard of or may not have heard of. One of those is Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills has a lot of homes from the 1950s and through the 70s. They're usually one level. There's a golf course nearby, but it's not like there's an HOA or it's really a golf course community. It just happens to be really close. Taking 70 or Tunnel Road out a little bit more, you have the East Asheville Library and then the VA, the Veteran Affairs Medical Center. Um, and as far as I've heard, we have one of the best VAs in the region, in the Southeast, as far as I know. So we're really, really lucky to have that there. Now, again, you can see the Blue Ridge Parkway goes through there. Now, that's another way for you to get around. You know, if we look out a little bit and we see where the Blue Ridge Parkway goes, you're able to get on it in many different places. Now, this is something that I use often to get to the south because you can see how the Blue Ridge Parkway goes all the way up and I can hop on right here and go all the way down here pretty easily and without a lot of stress. So headed back to East Asheville, you have the Southern Highland Craft Guild. There's a lot of, a lot of nature. You'll see there's just not a lot of stuff happening out there. But one thing that we did do, which is really smart, is that we ended up housing all the big box stores in one area. So a lot of people, when they think about Asheville, they think about all the boutiques and the arts and craft stores and the mom and pop stores and everything that makes it kind of artsy. And we have that. And it's all downtown and it's in West Asheville and it's all over. But we decided, you know what, we're going to put our mall and our TJ Maxx and our Target and our Walmart and all the things that come with any old town in one place. So that's exactly what we did here in East Asheville. And so there's the Asheville Mall, there's Target, the River Hills Shopping Center, there's a big movie theater there. Um, we just put it all in one place. So if you need to go do any of that stuff, you can just go right there. There's another Whole Foods. There you go. So if we go a little bit farther out on Tunnel Road, you'll see that we'll get to Swannanoa. Now, Swannanoa is its own thing. It's outside of Asheville. But one thing to note in this area is Warren Wilson College, which is a liberal arts college. And there's great trails around Warren Wilson, too. And then that is where the Leaf Festival is, the Lake Eden Arts Festival, out in that area. It's absolutely stunning and not to miss twice a year. Okay, so now that we're headed back over from Swannanoa back to Asheville, you'll see right in the southeast, you'll have the A.C. Reynolds High School and the Reynolds High School di uh, Reynolds District as well. That services a lot of students in the eastern part of Asheville. And then you have, like I said earlier, Oakley, and this is kind of near... What my husband finds fascinating is the Home Depot. <laughs> and uh, again, you're, you're really close to those big box stores. And then what's interesting, too, is that really nearby you have another historic district, which I haven't I have talked a little bit about in other videos, called Kenilworth. There's a lot of old homes there and a little lake, too, and that's quite close to downtown. And then we have the Biltmore Village. So this is all situated around the Biltmore Estate. It's a little area with shops and restaurants and boutiques that you can walk around. It's quite charming, old worldly, right, located right outside the Biltmore Estate. Okay, so really close to the Biltmore Village and in between that and downtown, you have our main hospital in Asheville called Mission. And Mission has everything that you'd need. It's where you go for surgeries and the emergency room and everything. And if you kind of look at, see where that is, here's downtown, here's Mission Hospital, here's Biltmore Village, here's East, North, and now we are going to work our way South. So 
You see the big old thing that takes up a lot of space in the southern part of Asheville is the Biltmore Estate. Many acres of beautiful land is owned by the Biltmore. And many people come throughout the year to enjoy it. There's horseback riding and vineyards and there's the azalea garden. But anyway, it takes up a lot of space and it's also gorgeous. We used to have an annual pass that we really enjoyed. Um, so right, so, there, so there's not a lot of public access, I guess is what I'm saying, to the southeast of Asheville. But you will find here, if we zoom in, on, 20, on Highway 25 that goes down, that is the main thoroughfare to the southern part of Asheville besides on the western side there's I-26 like we talked about earlier. Now this is going to take you down, Hendersonville Road is going to take you down to the southern part of Asheville and there's going to be Ingalls and there's the DMV license plate area which we frequent and here comes Biltmore Forest one of the most prestigious neighborhoods in Asheville and the Biltmore Forest Country Club we have a lot of country clubs around here and I also kind of call that this is a, a bigger area for retirees and I kind of call it the like doctor's row. There's physical therapists there. There's there's dentists. There's occupational health of all sorts. Other kinds of doctors all located along this road. There's also lots of townhomes and condominiums in that area. So a little bit more stress-free lifestyle can be found in the southern part of Asheville. But what happens in the southern part of Asheville too sometimes is that you lose that charm of being in Asheville proper and and sometimes it can become kind of like you're you could be anywhere so a lot of the most popular restaurants in downtown Asheville have opened up second locations down in the south few different reasons it's because you know people don't want to drive you know and and sometimes be stuck in traffic to get downtown and there's enough people now in south asheville that it can support the demand on these restaurants so here you'll find that you have a Publix, and you'll see another location for tupelo honey and there's another whole foods down there too so we're at three if you want me to map it to the home that's what I do. Um, there's also the Racket Club, which is where people love to go and swim. They have indoor-outdoor pools. They have a fitness center with child care and lots of events throughout the year that people like to be a part of. So if you didn't want to be at a part of an HOA within a town home or condo community or uh, individual single-family home, you could always join something like the Racket Club and still be a part and meet people. South Asheville, there's a lot down there. It could be its whole own map tour, which I will do because it is quite large. There's lots of different parks. There's Biltmore Park, which I've also done a video on. We can link it, link it at the end. Royal Pines, look at the size of that, and Arden. And then we have Lake Julian Park, which is a gorgeous lake. Um, and then this is also where our airport is. So the Asheville Regional Airport, regional, not international, but Asheville Regional Airport is about 20 to 30 minutes from downtown Asheville. Really convenient if you have to travel a lot. Now, most of the flights go from Asheville to Charlotte, Asheville to Atlanta or to Chicago or to D.C., somewhere like that. But super convenient. And I've always had a really easy time getting in and out of there. It's about the less stressful experience I've had when flying is flying to and from Asheville. Okay, now that we've covered the south, let's head over to the western side. Starting with this area called Bent Creek. Incredible! Houses from the 70s, really cool. I'll do, a, I'll do another map tour about that that kind of goes into detail about Bent Creek, one of my favorite places, because the best mountain biking is in this area down there. And then you have the North Carolina Arboretum right there, too. Uh, Bent Creek is incredible. So as we're headed back up, you'll see on the west side, on the west side, we'll start out and we'll, go, we'll come back in. We have Biltmore Lake, which I also did another video about Biltmore Lake gorgeous subdivision. You can walk all the way around this lake. You can get a canoe, a kayak. There's a little beach there, but it is private. You got to live there. You can't just go hop in there and run around. And then we have Candler. Candler kind of flanks the western side of 
of Asheville and it's developing. I love it because it is a, a mix of all kinds of people and kind of started out really rural, rural and it not a part of like what you think about when you think about Asheville. But over the years, because of its proximity, it has become really part of Asheville. When I first moved and bought a house in Asheville, I bought a house in Candler because it's where I could afford it at the time and nobody would come visit me. So I'm like, how can I get people? It's 15 minutes from downtown. I'm like, how can I get people to come visit me? So I end up getting a hot tub and then people are like, oh, can we come over? So anyway, that's the trick if you want to live in Candler. But now people don't care. They're like all the way in Candler. It doesn't matter. And we always call it the Twin Cities because it's Inca Candler. Now Inca is just a, a little area. You can see the Inca village here. It's just a little area before you get to Candler. And this area is called, I mean, this road that takes you out there is 1923, otherwise known as Smoky Park Highway. Hi, I'm Beth Shadler, and we are the Living in Asheville team, where we explore what it's like to move to Asheville, North Carolina. Please feel free to reach out in any of the ways down below. Give us a call, send us a text. We absolutely love it. And hit the subscribe button. You're going to want to learn more about Asheville. And click that little bell so that you can be alerted every time we make new videos for you. So coming back in towards West Asheville, so you can either go 40 to go to the south, or you can go up and over 240, which is gonna take you into the heart of West Asheville. And let's get a little bit deeper in here because this is really interesting. And again, I'll do another video of just West Asheville so we can really dive deep into it. So. West Asheville is a really popular place. There's just fun things happening. I mean, like there's impromptu dance parties that pop up at like a gas station. Um, there's lots of beer and, and live music, but also open mic nights and just art everywhere. Record stores, things like that. And that's kind of happening along Haywood Road right here that goes all the way over from, you know, the, the river all the way over to Patton Avenue. So this thoroughfare right here is where the action is happening. So if you live anywhere, kind of walkable area here to Haywood Road in close proximity, you're gonna be having a nice time. A lot of the houses there are from the 50s, the 60s, some in the 70s, but older arts and crafts style. Smaller footprints because it's in high demand, but there's just so much happening. And there is some new construction happening in West Asheville too, but it's kind of like, like I said, smaller footprints and kind of being built up instead of out. So if you look here in West Asheville, there's not just Haywood Road that is a wonderful opportunity, but there's Carrier Park, and Carrier Park has a huge playground. It's right along the French Broad River. There are races that are run there. There is yoga in the park. There is a dog park right there as well. You can see there's an RV park. There's lots to do right there. And there is a greenway that goes all the way up and around there. Carrier Park is where you go and exercise by the river. You can either put in or take out there too. We get in the river. We get in the French Broad River in tubes and kayaks and rafts. I've been in there on New Year's Day going down in a t-shirt. So you never know what it's going to be like, but it is wonderful that we have such a resource that runs right through the center of town. There are different areas here you can see in West Asheville. All have different little personas New Belgium Brewing is really close to there as well. And it's a hop, skip, and a jump from West Asheville over to the River Arts District, which is right here. And and then you're back towards downtown. River Arts District is at an, another industrial area that has been turned into a hip artist haven where you can see lots of graffiti and arts of all kinds and galleries and interactive um environments where the artist will be right there to speak with you through the art. Asheville in general is kind of on fire. We have a lot of stuff going on and there's a lot of people coming here and moving here. So if you're interested in it, please reach out in any of the links down below. We'd be glad to help you kind of figure out where you want to be and check out these videos because they're going to give you some deeper insight into where you think you might want to live.